a Pinterest for developers, and a Google Plus for Pinteresters, plus ActiveX. Bye-bye and good riddance. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 332 for Wednesday, May 6, 2015. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash tn2. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash t-n-2. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney, and this is the show where we talk through the tech news headlines with the people who care as much about them as you do. Today, welcome back to Ryan Hoover, founder of Product Hunt, a community dedicated to finding the best products out there. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, how's it going, Megan? Great, thanks for coming back on. So this week, Pinterest announced a new developer program, and Google Plus announced a new feature called Collections that look a lot like Pinterest. What do you make of these two stories? Mm -hmm. Yes, so Pinterest is fascinating uh, for a number of reasons, partly just because of the, the growth that they've seen. They have, I think, Comscore reported 75 million monthly active users, and that's just an estimate. So they're a massive community, and now they're just opening up this API in a private beta to developers and makers to, you know, to build off of. And um, it'll be just really interesting to see what people do in, in giving you access to not only read pins that people have, but also post pins and create boards and, and use that data that people have been contributing to the site and to the platform for several years. I actually have a friend, and I think she has over 1,000 pins in one board alone. And so this is data that we can now use to create other products and, and enhance our own in some ways. Right. So as you mentioned, it's not open to everybody. Uh, any developer can sign up and be on a wait list, white list uh, to get beta access. Mm -hmm. Are you going to apply for it? We did, yes. I, I'm not sure how we'll use it, but I think there could be some interesting experiments and, and ways for us to tap into that, especially as product hunt becomes more visual. We have some things in the pipeline uh, to, to use more imagery and video as well. Yeah, so uh, back in uh, February, Apple announced a deal with Pinterest. It was called App Pins, I think. There was a joint site where you could pin the apps that you wanted and then go directly to the App Store. Um, I just went back to look at it, and it didn't mm. seem like it had changed at all. Is this is this the same thing, or is this something different that we're talking about? Yeah, this is this is different. I, I think that is also an interesting play from Pinterest in that, you know, traditionally, and they've been around for a long time, they've not focused on revenue and monetizing, and increasingly so, they're focusing more on that. App pins is one small piece of that puzzle, and how can you take a discovery experience and, oh, I just found a new cool app, how can you tie that back to the actual purchase and transaction itself? And app pins is a really interesting partnership with Apple that, that Pinterest has, has made. Uh, of course, that will expand into others. I can imagine Amazon and other e-commerce sites integrating into Pinterest in some ways to make that transaction easier and also just a better user experience. If you if you find something on Pinterest, you don't want to hunt down where to actually purchase it. You want to be able to buy it right then and there. Right. I know that was the problem with Pinterest for so long. Like the links just went nowhere for so long or, you know, it was, mm. it was hard to really get to where you needed to go. I mean, one thing about Product Hunt that I really like, and maybe this is just a personal thing, but I like how it's a lot of information and not a ton of images right now. It's like, you know, you can see the icon of the person, you know, that has developed the app or commenting and, but... But I, I like that. I mean, but you think that the web is just going yeah. towards images and I should get used to it. It's, I mean, it's not so it doesn't just because everyone else is using images doesn't mean your app, or your product needs to have images, too. But if you look at the web and just how it's changed over time, let's go back to Twitter. And of course, Twitter had some limitations when it was based on SMS and just text messaging only. But it was purely text. And when it went to the web is purely text. And over time, Twitter has changed into a much more visual experience. Their new uh, replacement for the Discover feed is, is almost like a magazine. And, and that's increasingly so with other products. Of course, Pinterest started off as a very visual uh, way of communicating and a way of collecting things. And just visuals alone communicate so much in such a short amount of time that just the web and, and things that we do online are becoming more visual. Um, I think it's an increasing trend. Uh, but again, it's not doesn't mean every product needs to be visual and have images. Right. And it's probably the way you use, I mean, the way I use your site is like, I want to get the most information as possible. Like, what are the new products? What are they doing? And, you know, the, the mm -hmm. reviews are what's interesting to me. It's not like I'm a user that's like, what's the prettiest thing that I want to get or, you know, buy. So you're, you're probably right to go right. that way. 
So this week, Google Plus also announced collections, which a lot of people are calling Pinterest for Google. I tried it today. I can't really tell the difference between just the plain old Google Plus and Google Plus collections. What what did they do that's different? Yeah, it's just a they've kind of repackaged what you know Google Plus provides in other ways and into a way to catalog and collect things into a certain category or theme. So it could be a number of things. It could be cars I really would love to buy when I become rich, or it could be you know furniture that I would love to purchase. You know, I'm redecorating my home. Uh, a lot of these use cases exist within Pinterest today, and Google is playing within this world. Uh, I think it's another piece of you know Google's uh, mission really to to categorize and, and make data more accessible on the internet um, uh, connected in many different ways. And having people put these things together gives them more and more data to power their search engine, to power a number of other things that they're, they're doing longer term. Right. I mean, I'm not a, a big Google Plus user, so that maybe this is just me. But when I went in, it, it wasn't really a way to just save what I wanted, like in Pinterest and just you know, for me, it immediately, the only option was to share. So immediately anyone who's following me on Google Plus would just see what random thing I put up there just right away. So it wasn't my, the best experience for me. But do you know what collections, yeah. collections that I really, that I, the collections that I really like are the product hunt collections, the collections that you guys do, the curated list of products. <laughs> um, those are useful to me. As I said, who does those? So it's a combination of us. We curate and, and collect things in different categories of, of products. And then it's also the community. Most of them are actually created by people in the community that find cool things they like or they create interesting collections themselves. Today, one of the, we actually had a Slack. Uh, a lot of people who are on Product Hunt and just in the startup world in general, they use Slack and they love it. And Slack is becoming this massive platform with many apps and many integrations Someone, his name is Isaac, actually, he, he created this collection of Slack apps that was really useful and, and people shared it today and, and we promoted it. And, you know, there are a number of other collections from wonderful iOS uh, photo apps to Mac menu bar apps to, you know, uh, emoji apps. I mean, there's a number of different types of collections that have emerged over the past several months. So it's not just you in that basement where you are creating them all yourself. You have the community of people <laughs> that work for you, right? <laughs> Yes, yes. And I, I, I emerge out of this basement like room every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> so I did check out the Slack uh, collection. There were some really interesting things in there. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, we mostly use HipChat here. We've been you know, using Slack a little bit. Uh, but I did find a few uh, that I like. There was one called Slacker. I don't know if you've tried that out, but uh, it allows... I have. You I have trolled my teammates with that. <laughs> so do you, why don't you explain a little <laughs> bit about how Slacker works? Yeah, so Slacker is something that you you sign up, you authorize your Slack account to use their service, and then you can post as if you were anyone. So it could be Yoda, it could be Batman, Mr. T, a number of characters, and it has those characters' icons and faces as if they were in your Slack room. And so it's a fun way just to post and act like a different character, and no one knows who it's coming from unless you tell your teammates that I'm trolling you right now. And so it's just a fun, fun little app. I, I had fun in it, with it. I am um, in a Slack with a bunch of tech journalists, and I just randomly um, posed as Marge Simpson. And it really just, it does say bot <laughs> underneath it, so it's not, you know, they know it's not the real Marge Simpson. But uh, it oh, was Oh, I think they may have added that. Yeah, that, that today, it, it, when, you know, if you go to the Slack room or, you know, you can see that it says bot. And so I, I felt like I needed to explain mm -hmm. myself, you know, just me testing this out, sorry. But, you know, I think I turned some people onto it because it's pretty funny. I also tried out Support Kit. Have you used that as all, at all? You know, I have not used Support Kit. That's one I have I've not seen. What does that do? Uh, it's for app developers. And what it does is it allows you to better communicate using Slack with your users. So I thought it was really interesting and I downloaded it. And then I thought, mm. well, maybe I can communicate with people watching the show, people who have feedback. That would be uh, something. It's not exactly the right thing for that. Um, but what was great is that I did get an email right away back when, when I signed up from the creator, Mike Godzo, and uh, he was actually a fan of the screensaver, so that was nice. I knew it was a real email, not oh, just nice. a, <laughs> not, not just a auto email. Uh, and so he's, you know, he explained that maybe it wasn't the right thing for me, but it does look like a great way. I mean, that if you're going to develop an app, I think um, you'd probably agree. I mean, you do it really well. Communicating with the people using your app, listening to what they want is, uh, can probably be really overwhelming, but probably leads to a lot of success. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and, and more people are using Slack to just funnel information into it. So a number of integrations, but also having support and being able to communicate with users within the same interface that you use every day to talk to your team can be really useful. 
Yeah. So how do you, I mean, you really do communicate so well with the people. Uh, you, you're always asking for new features and, and apparently getting them. Um, how do you, is, is Slack the way that you manage everything? We don't communicate externally with Slack, but we do have actually some community-led, product hunt community-led Slack rooms. There's one with over 500 or 1,000, I'm losing track, uh, people in the community that are on Slack every day chatting about products and helping each other and hosting AMAs. Eric Willis is one of those uh, leaders of that group. And, you know, it's just been a really useful tool for the community to assemble itself. Um, you know, I also just personally use a lot of Twitter. I use TweetDeck. Uh, and just uh, that's one of my primary ways of communicating outside of just email, of course. Right. Okay, so uh, you we were talking about collections before. There's also an Apple Watch app collections. Um, my Apple Watch is arriving yes. tomorrow. Uh, what do you think are the apps that I need? Yes, so I will admit, I do not have an Apple Watch. I probably should. It's kind of my job to have one, but I did not order one. Uh, I have played with one, though, and it's actually pretty cool. It looks pretty good. It, it's not as bulky as I expected. And, you know, it's really early, but there are hundreds and hundreds of Apple Watch apps uh, on launch day. Product Hunt was filled with apps. Whether you liked it or not, you're going to see Apple Watch apps. And one that I'm particularly excited about, not necessarily because it's the best app, but I like the direction they're heading is called iTranslate. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. So it's a, it's a way to translate uh, and speak in other languages effectively. So you can not only do voice dictation, and it can translate it into a different language, like I could translate it to Spanish or to Italian or other languages. But you can also do the reverse, and you can have it listen to, to something, and then it can read out the text and what it means and translate it for you. So assuming that it actually translates it correctly, this is just a really interesting way of communicating across different language barriers with other people through a device that's persistent, that's always there, always accessible by just turning your wrist. Oh, that is interesting. I noticed that there were a lot of apps in the collection that had zero upvotes for now, but the one that was the most popular was Workflow, which I've heard recommended for the iPhone. I've, I don't know if you use that for your iPhone at all. Do you, Workflow? Workflow is really neat because it's it's taking this trend towards uh, APIs are becoming persistent. We just talked about uh, Pinterest opening up an API, and Workflow is a way to connect all these things together, very similar to Ift. Now, their their watch app is exactly what Workflow is made for. It's made for you to do quick actions, repeatable actions, things that you may have set up previously or things that you commonly do. And it's kind of a way to connect all of these different services together. And I have not played with the app itself yet, but I, I certainly love the direction. And it's built by uh, Aries, the, the CEO. I think he's 20 years old now, maybe he just turned 21 um, at most, young guy. And um, I just really like the direction they're heading. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting because I think, you know, what I've heard of some complaints about apps like, you know, Instagram is not that great for the Apple Watch. It's like there's some things that you're just not going to want to do because of speed or, you know, the screen. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting to see what exactly are the most popular apps. I think they're going to be really different than the iPhone or the iPad for that matter. Ryan, thank Absolutely. you thank you so much for joining us. Ryan Hoover is the founder of Product Hunt, and people can find you on Twitter uh, and on on Product Hunt. So thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to yeah. have you on. Thanks, Megan. Appreciate Take it. Care. Coming up, Oculus Rift is here, almost, and somebody just created Captain Picard's food replicator. But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by lynda.com. lynda.com is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who just want to make things happen. Maybe you want to master Photoshop, develop an app, learn to code, or sharpen your HTML skills. lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. If you want to sharpen your business skills to ask your boss for a raise or make yourself more marketable to find a new job, I recommend checking out some of lynda.com's newest courses, including Developing Executive Presence, Strategic Planning Fundamentals, Solving Common Project Problems, and the lynda.com course on Getting Promoted. There's also a new course on Getting Up and Running with LinkedIn. With a lynda.com membership, you can stream thousands of video courses on demand, complete with transcripts, which allow you to follow along or search for an answer and skip to that point in the video. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one fl flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, visit lynda.com slash TN2 and sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash TN2. And we thank them for their support. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Windows Weekly host Mary J. Foley tweeted a link to the Windows Edge developers blog outlining everything that's not going to be in Microsoft's new web browser. 
You can almost hear the sigh of relief as the Microsoft Edge team describes the legacy Internet Explorer-specific technologies that they no longer have to deal with. Adios, ActiveX, so long, VB script, good riddance, attach event. According to the blog post, over 220,000 lines of code have been removed. TechCrunch's Disrupt Conference is going on all this week in New York City, among other startup announcements and general disruptions. Reddit co-founder Alexis O'Hanahan re revealed that the social networking site Reddit will now launch a video channel soon. TechCrunch reports that the Reddit video channel will start by focusing on translating the site's popular Ask Me Anything or AMA interview format to video. And who besides me thinks they got this idea from Leo Laporte, who took matters into his own hands on Monday and live streamed himself on Meerkat, answering questions for the screensavers, Ask Me Anything. If you haven't checked out the AMA, you should. We'll put a link in today's show notes at twit.tv. The Verge reports that the first consumer version of Facebook's Oculus Rift will begin shipping early next year. According to a post on the Oculus blog, pre-orders will begin later this year. And finally, Reuters published a story about a real-life Star Trek replicator that will make meals from a pod in 30 seconds. The device is called the Genie. It's about the same size and shape as a coffee maker. According to the two Israeli entrepreneurs who created Genie, the device will be able to make full meals like chicken with rice couscous with vegetable or even a chocolate souffle. Yum. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv, and you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.